Point 1, I doubt God's existence, because our entire knowledge about God, about his attributes, and his commands comes from unverifiable revelation. God supposedly revealed his holy Torah to a Moses hidden away on a mountaintop, instead of doing it in front of his entire chosen people. God supposedly revealed his holy Quran to a Muhammad who was also by himself. God supposedly revealed his divinity and his son Jesus Christ to a Paul on the road to Damascus, instead of doing so, while Paul was in front of the Sanhedrin asking for letters to kill Christians. In every instance of God's revelation, he seems to reveal himself to people when they are by themselves, who then proclaim such revelations and require us to take them at their words. If God inspired people and granted them revelation, why does he no longer grant revelations today? Why do I have to base my eternal destiny on other people's words and traditions while I have no access to them? Point 2, I doubt God's existence, because God if God existence he would be fair in his manifestations with mankind. If God was fair, he would not grant revelations or work miracles only for certain people and not others. If God was fair he would not provide certain people with extra reasons to believe while denying others such proofs. If God was fair, he would not be a bystander in the face of unnecessary human misery, but would prevent, or at least stop such suffering. How was God glorified by millions sent to gas chambers? How was God glorified by half a million people being massacred in Rwanda? How is God glorified by leukemia, cancer, murder, rape, poverty, or depression? According to the Bible, God does whatever he pleases. If this is true, then God is not a God who takes pleasure in people being happy and secure, but rather in seeing them suffering in misery. If the vast majority of humans had the power God has they would not allow such atrocities to occur, because to do so is evil. If God does exist and still allows such evil to persist then God holds values which I have nothing but contempt for. I care for free will, but if I saw a 15-year-old punch a 5-year-old in the face I would intervene, even if the 5-year-old never thanked me in the parable of the Good Samaritan, Jesus teaches that the righteous man was the one who helped the man in need. What if we applaud the Good Samaritan standard to God? Is God righteous for not helping mankind when it is in need? Point 3, I doubt God exists seeing how the revelation put forward by theists regarding his manifestation in our world is incredulous to the modern mind in light of our experience and knowledge. When one reads the Hebrew Bible, the Christian Bible or the Quran one is stunned by the nature of bizarre stories. God intervenes in human affairs to send bears to maul youngsters who make fun of his prophet's baldness. God intervenes to strike down a man who seeks to prevent his holy ark from falling in a ditch yet does nothing to strike down Aaron who builds an idol. God inspires Saint Peter to declare Lot, a man who offered his daughters to be raped and later slept with his daughters, to be declared righteous in his epistles, yet the same God inspires apostles to call all those who do not believe in him as being unrighteous. There are numerous other stories, ranging from apostles healing people with handkerchiefs, to donkeys who speak in Hebrew, to people not being burned while cast into an oven, to people surviving in the belly of a large fish, to women being turned into a pillar of salt. If God exists he surely can accomplish this, but it boggles the mind that he limits his intervention in human affairs to such instances when he could have given mankind the knowledge of science or medicine early on instead of waiting for it to be discovered by men after thousands of years. If God existed he would manifest himself rationally and would help humanity by meeting its needs instead of leaving them to their own ignorance on important matters only to intervene in bizarre situations. Point 4, I doubt God's existence, because he has not made his existence certain, as well as not providing mankind with incontrovertible means to test him. Take prayers for example. How do we know that God pays attention to them? How do we know that what we pray for is according to his will or not? We have no way of knowing, because there is no feedback. If I'm a Christian, and I pray for my sick parent to get well and they die, but a Muslim prays for their sick parent and they become well, does this mean that the Quran is correct while the Bible is wrong? If a reasonable person wanted to test God to discover his will there should be a testable method by which this could be done without appealing to human interpretation. For me to believe God exists, I need to be certain that God exists. 
only then can I have the true freedom to choose whether I desire to worship him or not. People like the Apostle Paul were convinced by genuine revelation, not arguments from historicity. People like the Apostle Thomas believed because they had a revelation which met their standard of proof. Does the same God who supposedly granted such revelations want only certain people to have revelations while the rest have to rely on hearsay? Or could it be that such people made up or misinterpreted such so-called revelations? Could it be that God is simply a figment of our powerful imaginations?